He's building upon, and I'm still hurting. Did I just hear an alarm start ringing? Did I see sirens go flying past? I've got a singular impression things are moving too fast. Pretty good, right? I've never been more attracted to you. I could wander Paris after dark, take a carriage ride through Central Park, but it wouldn't be as nice as a summer in Ohio, where I'm sharing a room with a former stripper and her snake. I love you, Wayne. Oh my God. Look at me. Go. It's not it's have to go. Kathy. Kathy, stop! Hello, humans. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I'm not sure if everyone here has seen this movie, so I'm going to just establish how awesome it is. I really, it was a perfect Valentine's Day movie for a really smart alternative to Fifty Shades of Blech. So, <laughs> I mean, gray. Did I say Blech? Um, I will not pass judgment. <laughs> no, it's not your job. It's mine. Um, <laughs> So the first thing I thought it would be interesting to talk about is the structure of this movie. Uh, for everyone who's not, who hasn't seen it, it's got kind of a he saying, she saying thing, where um, your character, Jamie, starts at the beginning. And he, uh, they never sing together, the two, the two leads, except for at the middle why of the film. I start, why don't I, uh, it's, yeah. an, uh, it's based on an off-Broadway musical that was only sung, uh, it was only two characters and a small chamber uh, musical orchestra uh, of cello, guitar, uh, piano, and violin. And in the stage version, uh, their songs are monologues. And all of her songs start at the end of their relationship and go to the beginning. And all of his songs start at the beginning of the relationship and go to the end. And it's this exploration of a five-year relationship of two young people who meet, fall in love, get married, and break up in a span of five years. It's like this. <laughs> Which, let's face so it, the is most really relationships. <laughs> so what were the challenges? I mean, first of all, can we talk a little bit about the trend, how different this film is in terms of how it looks than the original Broadway production, which is basically two people singing right. alone only, on sets. I, right. Uh, I, uh, I love musical theater, and I, I'm a theater major. I, I, love, I love theater, and I wanted to keep this uh, as pure in its original form as possible. I didn't want to impose a screenplay on it. I didn't want to Hollywoodize it. That's why we did it independently for very little money, and he didn't get paid. Um, so uh, the reason... Really? Uh, <laughs> um, the only thing that I changed is that in the stage version, they sing out to the audience. They don't sing to each other, except when their timelines meet in the middle, and he proposes and they sing one song together. But as I listened to the score, um, and I had never seen the production, I just fell in love with the music, I fell in love with the score. I kept imagining the songs as scenes, because when he's singing to her, her reaction to it adds a whole nother layer to what the song is about. So that's why I, I, I changed, that's the only thing I changed uh, in, the, in the film, and added little bits of dialogue here and there, but it's still primarily 99% music. Well, there's also sort of a third character, though, in the movie, which is New York itself. Yes. 
Um, can you talk a little bit about how you used various locations when you were filming? Well, I'm a New Yorker. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, and, and New York was the dream for me, you know, getting across the river. <laughs> and um, and uh, so I love the city, and uh, uh, their love affair takes place here. Uh, and the city was very benevol benevolent to us uh, with our budget, so we, were, we used Staten Island, Harlem, uh, Brooklyn, Dumbo, and, uh, and the city itself. And uh, wherever we could, we, we got some really, we got some shots of New York that I personally have never seen. Like ever since Bloomberg started making those little park triangles, you know, um, uh, near the uh, Flatiron Building, there was a view of New York I've never seen because I never stood in that yeah. place and stood, so we shot uh, a big moment for him there. Um, wherever we could, we wanted to show uh, a, different, a different side of New York. It was a great ferry shot, too. I love that. When he yeah, first gets Yeah, I didn't realize job. we had water taxis until we did the movie. That was and awesome. Then, uh, I thought, oh, wow, I could do Funny Girl. So, um, <laughs> she, uh, so I put him on the taxi, and he's singing to New York. So. so, Jeremy, one of the things I kept on thinking about when I was watching this movie was the challenges that are very unique that an actor would have to navigate, which is, except for that a few instances, you're, you're not actually singing with Anna. One person is singing, and the other person, that you're basically reacting. And that's a big challenge in terms of establishing the connection, which has, we have to really believe in that connection for this movie to work, and we do. Yeah, I, well, you know, it works so well in the musical, of course, because you're, you're alone on stage, and you're singing out, and you know, the audience can sort of imagine the other person's reactions. So we kind of got to imagine those for ourselves and create them. And um, we wanted to keep it really reali realistic, of course. We, I mean, it's a musical, so there's a sense of height, heightened quality to it, but, but we wanted to keep it very sort of uh, natural and kind of have that indie feel. And... Uh, and sort of what unlocked it for me is uh, this sort of thing happens all the time, especially when you have an argument with somebody where one person's talking and the other person is just like, rant. yeah, or, or it's, it, it turns into a rant. Or, 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 and, it, and for me, it became more about uh, how much the other person is listening. Mm -hmm. So a really cool thing about the stage show is that the other person's not there and they're not present, and so there's a, that whole element missing. But in our show, they're there, but to what degree are they actually present? A, exactly. I mean, so, so it's like, uh, you know, there's a scene where I'm just like ranting at Kathy and like trying to talk to her and talk her down off this thing, and then it turns into this big yelling thing, and she just kind of sits there staring forward just hearing the bad things, you know? It's, you know, you know, been you, you've been, you have that fight where like, yeah where you want somebody to say just one thing and they say everything but that. Right. And that's all you can think about. And, and, if, and, if they don't, and if that doesn't get said, then there's no way that you're gonna get out of a mood or you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna leave in a bad mood. So I mean, there's, there's, there's things like that throughout the show. And then there are the happier moments and stuff where it's more of sort of taking in and learning about somebody. And that kind of helps the sort of lack of dialogue between the two of them. What decisions did you make as a filmmaker to establish their connection? I mean, I thought, I, I think you used a lot of handheld, is that right? Um, it, it, people say that, but, but yeah, th there's handheld, there's Steadicam, there's Dolly. Uh, really, the music to me dictated how, uh, you know, uh, that's where their relationship lies, is in the music and in the songs. So really, I listened to the music, and that's when, uh, when I heard the music move for me, that's when the camera moved, and it was all about being as honest as possible. So when she finds the letter in the first song, I'm not giving anything away that he's left her, uh, what is the truth of that? Well, she's in shock, so she's standing still. Uh, she's sitting in shock, so the camera will move around her, and I wanted to be as intimate as possible. And then there are other songs that are very uh, intercut and happy and full of energy, and so those those shots are, you know, but the music was telling me all that. Yeah, some of them actually felt like 1950s musicals to uh -huh. me. Like, I love that central, I mean, the center, this, the center song, I forgot the name of it. The next 10 minutes. Oh, well, that, so that, one, that one is, I always uh, was very interested, because it is, is steady cam that feels like handheld. It did. He, it, during that proposal section, he does this thing where he kind of yeah, like rocks so back rocks. and forth, like yeah. you're like, well, it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like... Well, the it, song is so beautiful and so romantic. We wanted to unsteady it a little bit uh, mm -hmm. visually so that you're a little... It's beautiful. And the music has that sort of yeah, rocking quality. Yeah, well. it, it, it does. It swoops. It does. Yes, it's swoopy. It swoops. It swoops. Oh, yeah. Um, can we talk about Shmuel the Taylor for a second? Shmuel. That's a, I mean, that seems like the most challenging scene for you. I mean, for both of you, actually. Oh, yeah. There's a song in the, in the show where he uh, tells, uh, he's a writer, and he tells us, he makes up a story for her because she's uh, 
uh, in a in a she's an actress, a struggling actress, very creative girl, but she gets in her own way. She gets insecure, and he tells her this Christmas story about a, a Jewish tailor named Shmuel so from good. a town called uh, Klimovitz. Uh, Klimovich. Klimovich, sorry. And um, um, I avoided this song as long as I could. Uh, I, I, I just didn't know how to shoot it. Uh, <clears throat> I couldn't figure it out in the context of the... So at first I asked Jason if he wanted to write an original maybe, and, and he said, no, this is the show. <laughs> Either do it or don't do it. I went, yes, no, 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 I'm going to do it. And then um, I decided, oh, I'll, I know what I'll do. I'll do an animated version. So I, didn't, I could avoid it completely. And... Um, I met with animators, and then I realized that there was no way to stop the movie for six minutes or seven minutes of a song with an animated feature. It would have been stupid. So what the song then became about is not so much what he's singing, like the story, but why he's singing it. And once I figured that out, I wrote a little scene that leads into it that sets it up a little bit, which they improved off of. And, um, and then Jeremy and I staged it the day before. We shot it on a Monday. We staged it on a Sunday, where he's running around the apartment, and you see how much he loves her, like what efforts he will go through to get her out of a, of a dark mood. And that's what the song became about. You know what he sang I, it for 12 hours straight, yeah, live. And it was hot in there, it was summer, and I was wearing a Christmas sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a lot of props. A lot of props. There lot were of props. a lot of props. Yeah. Like the there's, a, there's, a, there's one constantly. point it, where there's a break in the song, and, my, and, and, and I'm just like, <gasps> <sighs> And I was That's not acting. Crazy. It was just like... <laughs> His breath is gone. So, I, mean, I, was so I got nothing curious. left. It seems like the one that you had to do the most staging for, too. That I was really struck. Like, when I heard that you had made this movie, I thought, well, they keep Shmuel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you totally well, the, did. Well, the end of Shmuel is the payoff. I'm because really it's proud of it. it no, it I think really it's actually an important part of their relationship, is the way he tries to cheer her on. Yeah. That's to see that. It's, the, it's, the, last, it's yeah. the last, like, real effort that he puts forward. Um, towards their relationship. Before he starts phoning it in, literally. I think well, a lot so. Well, happens off camera, I think. I think he did that many, many times. And yeah. the next time we see him, he's, he can't do it anymore because it's not working. And, you know, when you try and cheer somebody up and they just don't want to, you know, you can't reach them anymore and it becomes a bitterness between two people. Well, this is what I think is so cool about this story that you guys captured, you captured in your performance, you captured in your direction as well, is... You know, so few films are made, besides the Star is Born movies, about two people who are trying to make a relationship work who prize their artistic ambitions as much as each other. And what I think one of the challenges is that you navigated interestingly, but I'd love to hear your, your preparation, is that Jeremy, Jamie <laughs> isn't always a sympathetic character at all. In fact, he kind of slides into some kind of skeevy behavior. Um, but you're still a sympathetic guy. I mean, some of that's the direction, but some of that is some of the choices you made as an actor, I think. Well, I, I mean, I, I, different people are going to take different things from this. I mean, uh, I've had people say, uh, God, I loved you in the movie, but I hate you. Like, I couldn't stand your character. I wanted him to die. And other people are like, I totally get it. Like, I really felt like his side of the story. I think it's just where you are in your yeah, life you and how you're going to interpret it, which is really cool to... Movies don't do that all the time to where they really make you feel strongly about one sort of thing or the other. But, yeah, I mean, for me, it, I think, of course, you always want to make your character sympathetic. I mean, you have to be sympathetic towards your character yeah. no matter what, even if he's the evil person because you have to understand why he's doing the things he's doing and what's driving him. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was definitely important to me to, to, to have the audience at least have some sort of some sort of idea of what's going on in his head even while he's cheating on his wife. How different is it to do a movie musical? I mean, you're a Tony-nominated That's you know, all I Broadway That's all guy. I do. Yeah. That's so all I do. All I, all I do is musicals. <laughs> Seriously, you were in Smash on TV. I was in but Smash. How, I did what is another it like movie to, musical called Joyful Noise. Do I, you just have to bring it back a lot when you do a, a film as opposed to um, theater? Yes and no. I mean, there's there's different aspects, of course. Um, there's if the camera's right in your face, and then things you know are told behind the eyes, and you don't have to throw a big gesture. Um, fine. Um, then then there's a difference there. But I, and and I'm still, of course, learning the difference. You know, I'm still new to film. Uh, but at the same time, I I, I try not to let those little technical things dictate what I do on screen. I mean, if it's 
too much, I just I'll trust Richard to say, hey, just take it down. Did you a have notch. to be like, kid, bring it back. No, because the thing of it is, his character is effusive and energetic right. and yeah. is more aggressive than hers because he's very, very ambitious. So mm -hmm. all of that energy uh, worked. He never went too big. Yeah, he's got. The, he he's knew got the character. Just, just he just always, has this energy, and he's got. He's kind of bottled up, and yeah. she just kind of like. She's more internal. You know what's so sick. weird about that is you're the writer and she's the stage actor and it's true. Her character is a lot more withdrawn. It makes complete sense because, um, you know, as, as, a, as an actor, uh, especially an unsuccessful actor, it <laughs> kind of weighs down your soul for a while and yeah. you be, have this sort of masochistic feel and you feel like you're not good enough and there's a confidence issue and I think you tend to, to shy away from things. And when you are confident or maybe even cocky or overly confident, you want to put everything out there all the time. And I, I think it makes total sense. We, I, we came up, I came up with a backstory for her because I, she may not be uh, gaining a success as a singer actress, but she's a very creative woman. So wherever I could show her, she can take a picture, she can make right. dresses, she, she can make collages. She, she, she's one of those people that can do a lot of things but never finishes anything and never seems to, you know, she's like that kind of person. Uh, but she has a lot of creative energy in her, you know, and she's a smart girl. I was trying to, we were trying to do that. Try you to did, that. I mean, did you do your photographs, he says, right before he starts singing about Shmuel? Right, <laughs> right, and the photograph in his book jacket is the one that she took, actually, so if you connect the dot that on that, you know. A lot of great small details like that in this. A lot of little things like in there that connect the dots on, the more you see it. Um, well, I'm gonna ask you one more question then and open it up, but what are you, what's your favorite number in this? You know, I do different answers, but the more I've seen the film way too many times now, and um, the one that always gets me the best, uh, that always get, hits me and surprises me the most, is a part of that, the song that Kathy sings. Um, to, as 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 Jamie is gets more and more successful, she's so excited for his success, but then, but then at the same time, she feels like she's just getting shoved aside um but it but there's a hopeful quality to it even though she's saying this sort of slightly negative thing it's a really beautiful moment and it's, Anna i think that great. song is sort of the heart of the film in some ways because mm -hmm. it nails the ambivalence you feel when someone you really love is yeah. succeeding but you're not and you, but and, and and you see that they are still like really in love with each other and i, I you also can sort of see his 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 success is kind of blind to him to her slow burn unhappiness. Uh, I love, uh, I mean, I love them all. Uh, I'm, I think If I Didn't Believe in You is one of my favorites because it's, uh, uh, it's all done in one take without cuts. He sang it 14 times and it starts, it's a little one act play really because he starts off very love, they're having an argument, they improvised an argument and um, it's when he's successful and he starts off very supportive and caring and by the end of the song it turns into a very honest argument that that couples who know each other too long have, uh, where he gets frustrated and angry as says, as says something cruel. And Anna it, it plays the reaction of it, and his performance uh, is something just, I'm very proud of, uh, of how that was done, because uh, it was found in rehearsals. Uh, we told them, uh, my cameraman and I said, just, just have the argument and go wherever you want and we'll follow you. And we looked at it and thought it was, you don't want to break it up, you just, it was so uh, organic and real that, um, I, I really dig that. And you sang everything live, right? Yeah, almost everything, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a few things that were... Some, things some that were environmental dubbing. thing that we had to kind yeah. of... I mean, thank God you guys around. are both such great everything. stage performers. Other well, that's what was necessary. I wanted who, uh, people who were really great actors who did not worry about their voices because the voice was there. So they could perform because these, these roles have to be acted. They're, these songs have to be acted. Yeah. They're very emotional. So should we open this up to questions? Has anybody seen it yet? Yeah. yeah! Everyone should see it, honestly. I don't always say that. <laughs> Who's got a question? Actually, on that point, we're all going to go see the movie now. Where can we see it in New York, and where can people see it? It's at the Village elsewhere. East on 2nd Avenue and 12th. And it's also on VOD. It's on, on demand and on Apple iTunes. Yeah. And, and like Amazon and all the other things you can get. And Amazon, yeah. Video. Um, so I haven't seen it yet, but I spent all day listening to the soundtrack yesterday because I'm oh, a big nice. last five years geek. Um, so you said that there was one day when you were singing literally for 12 hours. More than one day. <laughs> Many days. And I read that you did like 95% of the movie live. Yeah. So as a singer, how did you prepare your voice for that kind of heroics? 
Um, well, you know, I, I'm a Broadway guy, so I'm used to doing like eight shows a week, and you kind of build up that sort of endurance, vocal endurance muscle. Um, and luckily, Richard wouldn't schedule, you know, 12 hour singing days back to back. You know, you might have a few days off, and then you have a big singing day, and maybe, maybe you have a week off, and then have a big singing day. Um, so they were, they were spread out enough, but I mean, it, it, Luckily, the two of us were very were, remained very healthy. We only shot it for three weeks. It was a twenty-one day shoot. So yeah, and so we were we were, you know, we weren't drinking, we weren't going out and partying. We went home, went to bed, Party and came nights, back. But they had two days to. Yeah, we didn't do that. I didn't do that. Did Anna do that? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay, well. You always you went home. You I did go home. home. Yeah. I was a good kid. But, but uh, no, it's uh, it's just it's just about endurance and taking care of yourself. And um, we had Georgia on set. Yeah, and we had a we had a great uh, music Georgia Stitt is musical Jason director. Uh, wife, who's a, br a wonderful composer lyricist, and uh, she was my right arm on set, and she warmed them up every day. Yeah. And uh, and uh, it's really it's really warming up. Yeah. And then at, at the same time, um, you know, the, the songs all have sort of a vocal high point that you kind of have to prepare yourself for, but. Most of the songs are pretty in the middle, and I, and I think as long as you're sort of tuned in to the, um, to the character and you're not pushing it too much. And his voice is to... sick. I mean, it's just kind of sick being on set. <laughs> Watching him sing is just kind of it's sick. It's stupid. Stop. It's just like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Am I on? Oh, thank you. Speaking of getting into music, I know I'm also... Uh, uh, singing 12 hours and things like that. Are you going to probably pursue a music career, maybe? Or it's just funny that you ask like that. that. You know, I, I have mostly been an actor who sings, and so I've done a lot of musical theater stuff and singing as part of projects. But, uh, you know, after, five, after we filmed last five years, there was a, a little bit of an off time for me, and I was like, i got to find something. And, uh, you know, I've always kind of written music um, on my own, but I was very protective of it, and I kept it to myself, and I was just kind of sacred, and I did not want anybody to listen to it or judge it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 it's just very special. It's kind of an outlet for me. And uh, I ended up getting talked in to do, like, a cabaret show, just to, you know, just to make some money and to have fans get to see. And... Uh, and uh, I decided that I was going to do a couple original songs in that show, and I did, and it was really well, uh, really well received. Really and so, uh, yeah, I'm starting to uh, put together an album of, of original stuff. So that's going to be really new and interesting, and I don't know anything about the music world, but we're jumping into it. Yeah. Hi there. Uh, thanks so much for coming in. You've been in so many amazing musicals. Would you say that there's one that you aspire to be in? That I aspire to be in? Wow. Um, you know, I like to say that, like, well, I, I, I really like to do original work because you, um, you get to create something. And you create a character. I mean, it's really cool to do shows that have already uh, been done and to revive a really great classic character. But, um, but getting to, like, put the work in and, and develop something and create something from scratch. So I, I would say something that hasn't been written yet. Oh, we have time for one more question. Hi. What was it like working with Anna Kendrick? What was it like? <laughs> you, you, Tell you us the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Anna, Anna is, is a very interesting person. Yeah, the first day we met, we got really drunk, and, uh, <laughs> and this was before we had to do stuff. Um, and so, you know, you, you meet someone and you have to, like, fall in love and make out and hate and throw things at and yell and all this, basically every emotion you could think of. Um, you kind of have to get to know them at a, like, really quick uh, speed. And so we got drunk and kind of really just let it all out on the floor. And then the next day, uh, you know, she, she was, she's a very quiet person and she's kind of... Um, She's, very, she's, she's more introverted than you would think she is, but she also has these like spurts of wit and, uh, and, and sarcasm and uh, sort of this firecracker quality. So she was a little hard for me to pin down at first. Um, and uh, so she was kind of this weird enigma. And then we would step on, on set and she would be a thousand percent present. And it was, yeah. it was really incredible. And then by, by the time we, f we finished filming, um, um, 
it was it was this sort of strange roundabout to to a closeness in a relationship. Um, I don't think there's anybody quite like her. She's she's extraordinary because I mean she's been performing, she's been acting and performing since she was 12. So her skill set is right here. She's such a pro, and she's so smart and incredibly funny. Just re you know follow her on social media. Her her she's got this razor sharp like Dorothy Parker wit, and um, she's also. Um, a filmmaker, she understands the medium in an, really uh, intense, in, in, intimately. So she'll come on in a, in, and they'll be given direction and we'll talk about a scene and she'll be thinking for a second and she's thinking about the entire thing and have an idea and um, uh, she was incredible to work with. She was the first, you know, one we attached. Uh, I actually, she, thank God, attached herself to the movie before, I met her before Pitch Perfect came out. So um, she was, uh, her favorite musical is Jason Robert Brown's Parade, which is a different show, and which was just, we just saw last night that he was in, which was amazing. And um, so she was excited about that and uh, was introduced the last five years through the script. And then Pitch Perfect came out. So she was a, a, a real valuable um, asset and um, the only Kathy I wanted. She's just, in, she's an Incredibly she's talented. Most, she's one of the most versatile. I would have just, just incredibly incredibly talented. to come on board if it was anybody less. <laughs> we were really lucky. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for making this awesome movie, and thank you for sitting with us. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Go see it. Tell all your friends. <laughs>